Hey, I'm Pedro from the Remix team, and I want to talk to you about how the Remix dev server works a little under the hood so you can understand how to best use it. So let's just start with a quick example of running the Remix dev command, which is what we use to spin up the dev server. So the first thing that's going to happen when you run this command is the dev server is going to be spun up. So let's just represent that here. So this is the dev server. And this is just really the compiler in watch mode, right? So we'll just keep that little note here. Um, so this isn't the thing that you're going to be hitting from your browser, right? By default, what's gonna happen is the dev server is gonna spin up, it's going to spin up remix serve dot slash build or whatever you've configured your server build directory to be. And we call that the app server, right? So let's say that you've got your browser up here and you navigate to a page. Well, the browser is gonna ask the app server for that route and it's gonna render it. And if you click on a button in your app or if you go to a, do a page navigation, anything like actions and loaders, that's also gonna go from the browser to the app server. So every single time that the browser asks for data, documents, loader data, actions, mutations, like any of that stuff, it's all going through the app server. The dev server is just there to rebuild your app when you make code changes. Okay, so let's look at another example of running Remix Dev. In this case, let's run Remix Dev. We're gonna use the dash C flag to run a custom server. And then we're gonna use the dash, dash port flag to set the port. So that's what we're running now. now. Let's just make sure that it's clear that this is a separate example. And once again, the dev server is gonna be spun up. But you know this port flag is actually affecting the dev server. So the dev server is gonna spin up on port 4000. Then we're gonna spin up the app server. So it's gonna look the same again. And this time the app server is going to be whatever command you specify. Great, and this is still running on the same port it was before. Let's just say that was port, I don't know, 8000. Or maybe you configured it to 3000 whatever it was, right? If you want to change this port, just change it how you normally would. So maybe if this is an express server, you go into the server.js and you go to where app.listen is called and you change the port there. So really anytime that you want to change anything about your app server, you just do so directly, the same way that you would do it in production. All of these other arguments and configuration for the dev server are affecting this process here, not this one. Typically, you're not even gonna to wanna to set the port for the dev server at all. You don't really care about that. That's not the one that you're hitting with your browser. Like we saw earlier, the browser is always hitting the app server, not the dev server. So now let's see how all of this stuff comes together. So we're gonna start out by representing the files. So let's say down here, you've got your app code, right? So this is like your routes and all that stuff. So the very first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna run remix dev. And maybe we're running it with a custom server. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen then is we're going to spin up the dev server. And like I said, the dev server is really just the compiler. So what it's going to see is it's going to see all of this app code and it's going to take that in and it's going to produce the browser build which is public slash build, unless you've configured that. And it's also going to spit out the server build, which is usually in build, unless you've configured that as well, okay? So that's really step one. One is we build, right? Then what's gonna happen is we're gonna spin up the app server. And that's gonna be spun up by looking at the server build and using that. So here we're running the app server. Okay. So let's take all that, move it down a bit. Great, so now the 
someone visits our app on the browser. So this is browser. And so the browser is gonna ask for one of the routes. And so now the app server can respond with those routes and it can serve your app and do all that stuff. So if you don't change any code, what's gonna happen is every time the browser navigates or changes things, again, it's just gonna hit the app server each time. Okay, so what happens when actually we make changes? So let's just reset this for a second. So now let's say that we're going to make code changes. So that's step one. Well, the dev server is going to pick that up. And what it's going to do is it's going to rebuild these files. So let's say two, it's going to rebuild. Okay, great. Okay. And now uh, the dev server by default is going to restart the app server because it knows there's new server code here. Right, it's rebuilding both of these things. It knows that there's new server code and that the current running app server doesn't have that code yet. So it's actually going to kill this process and it's going to restart the app server with the new code. So that is step three, restart app server. Okay. Then the app server is going to tell the dev server that it's ready. I'm ready. And finally, the dev server is going to send hot updates to the browser. And the last, last thing that happens is if these hot updates inform the browser that, hey, some of the loaders have changed, then the browser is going to know that it needs to six refetch data for changed loaders. So that's the whole thing. So just to review what's happening here is you make changes, the dev server recompiles them, the app server picks up those changes, and right now it's doing that by just restarting and then it coordinates with the dev server. Once it has those changes ready, it can tell the dev server, hey, I'm ready for you to send the hot updates to the browser. And the reason we do that is we don't want the hot updates to go into the browser first and the browser to request the changed loader data before the app server has a chance to pick up those code changes. We wanna make sure the app server is completely up to date when we send these hot updates to the browser. So that's why we do this step four, I'm ready, where the app server communicates to the dev server that we're good to go. So that's how HMR and Hot Data Revalidation, or HDR, are working in Remix today. Now, our templates already have this set up for you, so if you're working from one of our new templates, you won't need to do anything about this. But if you're migrating to the new dev server from an existing project, it's really good to know what's going on here. The other thing to call out is that by default, I mentioned that we're restarting the app server every time that the dev server rebuilds. So every time you make changes and the dev server recompiles uh, these files down here, your app server is going to restart. Well, there's actually a way around that where you can actually, we don't really care about restarting. What we really want is to make sure server is running up to date code, right? That's what we really care about. It turns out that restarting is a really easy way to guarantee that but there are more advanced ways of doing this without restarting the server. Okay, so now let's look at an example of how you might be able to update the server code without restarting your app server. So let's create Remix latest, explanation. Okay, so let's actually just run the express template to see how it works. So running on port 3000, there it is. And let's open up one of the files in there. And we can edit this welcome remix to say, hello, HMR plus HDR. And there we go, so I'll save that. Okay, cool, so we're getting that update coming in. And you can see here that the server, the express server only started once. It didn't actually restart when we did a rebuild. Let's just, let's just do that again, just to see that. So, changed. Okay. Okay, awesome. So you can see again, we didn't actually restart the express server. 
the Express server is somehow picking up those changes. We can see that because if we do a full refresh, the server side rendered document has this change text in it. So let's start by looking at the package JSON. So specifically what you'll notice is we're running Remix dev, we're specifying the dash C flag to run our custom server, just like how we looked at in our diagram here. But we're also running with this no restart flag. But if you use this flag, it's your responsibility to make sure that one, your app server is picking up those code changes, and two, that your app server is sending this I'm ready message to the dev server once it is ready. So let's see how this template does that. So let's go into the server.js file. We have our express app right here. We're setting it up, we're setting up compression, we're statically serving the build, like we're doing all this normal stuff. Um, and here's where the app actually listens. And you'll notice a couple things. So the first thing is that when the app comes up the first time, once it's listening, it sends this broadcast dev ready call in development mode. And this function is something that we provide in the Remix node package, also in the Remix Cloudflare and Remix Dino packages in case you're using those. And that's what actually sends this I'm ready message to the dev server. So after the initial build, it's gonna send the I'm ready message to the dev server so that just for the initial build, everything's ready. Okay, but what about for rebuilds? Well, for rebuilds, you can see that there's this fancy create dev request handler. And what this is doing is it's using Chocodar to watch for changes to the server build. So this is what's in charge of running this little dotted line here of, of knowing that the server build change and then picking up those changes. And specifically what we're doing is when any of those server files change, we're going to use this trick of doing a dynamic import with a timestamp. And so normally, you know, conceptually what we're trying to do is we're trying to re-import the server code in our already running server. But if you just import it normally, it's going to use the import cache and it's going to give you the old code from the from when you initially spun up your app server. You don't want that. You want it to actually be forced to pick up the new code. So we force it to pick up new code by using this trick of using a timestamp query parameter inside of the import. So this is kind of an advanced technique, but it's just a way of getting around the import cache um, that ESM has so that we make sure we force pick up the new server code. So now we've got the updated build and now that we've got the updated build, we can send the I'm ready message to the dev server. And then on any time that we handle any subsequent requests, we're going to use the new build, right? Instead of the old build. So that's what's going on here. So this is something that we've already written for you. So if you don't understand 100% of what's going on there, that's totally okay. You just have to know that what it's doing is it's doing this picture right here. It has a way of watching for changes picking up those changes by re-importing them, and then sending an I'm ready message to the dev server once everything is up to date. So going back to the terminal output for the dev server, you can actually see these steps reflected in the logs, right? So rebuilding means that the dev server noticed that there were code changes being made and started the rebuilding process. And then you can see when the rebuilding is done, so it's actually written out the updated files here. And then when the app server is ready, that's when the dev server has received this I'm ready message from the app server. So you can see the time between the rebuild being done and receiving the message was 151 milliseconds for the first rebuild and 50 milliseconds for the second rebuild. So that's really fast because like we said earlier, if we look at the way that this is actually happening, we're not restarting the server, we are just re-importing and busting the import require cache. So if you are facing slow load times here, then that's something you might wanna consider investing in is grabbing this code right here and integrating it with your project. One thing to note is that this is how you would bust the import cache for ESM, right? We're using imports here, but if you're using CommonJS or CJS, you're gonna be using require instead of import. So that the way that you would wanna do that is you can check out in the Remix docs, there is actually a section for this in the Remix Run Dev CLI v2. So you can look in Keeping App Server Running here, and you can see here how you would replace the import cache busting 
for ESM with instead purging the require cache for CommonJS. One last thing to note is that if you're using the Remix app server, that is the Remix serve command in your scripts, then that's not going to support the dash dash no restart flag. So if you want to be able to pick up code changes for the server without restarting the app server, you're not going to be able to use Remix serve. You're going to have to eject from that and use the express template and something similar to this code here.